curve sketching is what I want to talk about today. It turns out all this business about uh, critical numbers and the inflection points and the increasing and decreasing, all that stuff can be used for a general purpose method to draw the graph of any function. Basically any function that you can um, imagine and any function that you can understand taking the derivatives of. It's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty uh, powerful technique. It's pretty cool if you ask me. Anyway, let's uh, let's just try um, an example. I think you'll see by the example how the process works. Basically, you find all the critical numbers, the inflection points, and then you uh, somehow tie this information together to draw the graph. It's not so bad. Um, I think actually all we're going to do is just uh, one big example. Uh, I want to sketch the graph of this function, f of x equals x to the 4 minus 8x cubed plus 18x squared. All right. Do you know what the graph of that looks like? The answer is no. There's no reason why you should know what the graph of that looks like. But uh, as we'll see, it's not so hard to come up with it. It takes a bit of, you know, there's a few steps, but it's not really very difficult. And it's all very much related to the stuff we've been doing recently. No new big ideas. Anyway, what we're going to do is find the critical and inflection points. Inflection points. With the y values, this is something we don't usually do, but that's what we're going to do this time, and uh, plot them on a graph. All right, we know how to do that, right? So let's uh, let's get it started. Now, because I want the critical numbers and the inflection points, we're going to have to take the derivative. So let's do the first derivative is 4x cubed minus 24x squared plus 36x, right? And I'm going to take the second derivative also. This we're going to use for the inflection points. Uh, that would be 12x squared yeah, minus 48x plus 36. Okay, so first of all, let's find the critical numbers. That would be, you use the first derivative, simplify as much as you can, and then set it equal to zero, and solve for x. That's what we're going to do for the critical numbers. Let's do that right now. you got to save this stuff. We're going to use all three of these functions throughout the whole problem. All right, for my critical numbers, as always, we got to find when this does not exist and also set it equal to zero. The uh, does not exist part is easy in this case. This, uh, there's no denominators here, no squares, no nothing that, that could make, mess this up. So f prime does not exist. Uh, it never does not exist. That is, f prime always exists. So we don't have to care about that. What about f prime equals zero? This we should care about. Actually, before we do this, let's simplify the derivative as much as we can. Uh, you can factor out x, and you can also factor out 4. So let's factor out 4x. What remains is x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then this part you can also factor as x minus 3 and x minus 3. So if you like, that's x minus 3 squared. Anyway, this is the first derivative. All righty. We gotta solve, uh, set this equal to zero and solve for x. So 4x times x minus three squared equals zero. Solve for x, you just set each of these equal to zero. So 4x equals zero, gives you x equal zero. And then x minus three squared equals zero means x minus three equals zero. You square it on both sides and so x equals three. All right, so these are my two critical numbers. Now I said before, what you wanna do is find the critical numbers with the y values and then plot them on a graph. So we need to find the y values for each of these. How do you find the y value? You plug into the original function f of x, which is not this, all right? If you plug these in here, you get zero. That's, that's the whole point of these numbers. But to get the y values, you plug into the original function. Let's do that. All right, we need to find the y values for my two critical numbers. They are x equals 0 and x equals 3. The way you do that is you just plug this number into that function. Uh, plugging in 0 is easy. f of 0 is, you know, 0 to the 4 minus 8 times 
zero cubed plus 18 times zero squared. This is zero. All of those add up to zero. Plug in three here. This is a little uh, bit more of a pain here. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to make this a little easier just by factoring out. You notice you can factor out x squared here. Minus 8x plus 18. All right, you could use your calculator here, but I don't, I don't really like using my calculator. So uh, we can plug in here. It's a little easier when you factor it out. Anyway, f of 3 is, I'm going to plug into this second one, 3 squared times 3 squared minus 8 times 3 plus 18. What's that? This is 9 here times. This is 9 minus 24 plus 18. Do all of that out. You get um, 3, I believe. 9 and 18 is 27, and then minus 24 is 3. So this is 9 out there times 3, which is 27. All right, so I have two critical numbers. They are x equals 0, y equals 0, and x equals 3, y equals 27. I want to plot these on my graph. As you're doing all this sort of algebra, you should also start drawing your graph right away. So I'm going to turn it over to my buddy Hoodie Man. He's going to start drawing the graph. I am the Hoodie Man, and I'm ready to draw the graph. So um, first of all, you know, I'm, I'm going to start to draw the graph. I got my pink marker on here. Um, first of all, I'm going to plot the critical points that he just told me about. They were x equals 0, y equals 0, and x equals 3, y equals 27, which I'll just put up here. All right? That's my other point. Now, these are critical numbers. That means the slope at these points is 0. Okay? So I'm going to indicate that at these points by just putting a little horizontal line through that. That's because when the curve goes through this point, its slope must be horizontal, all right? This is just like a visual reminder to myself. Eventually, I'm going to draw the curve, which is the whole point of this whole uh, exercise. When the curve goes through this point, it should be horizontal, all right? Not, can't, not, you know, anything else. Horizontal, okay? Those are the critical numbers. I don't really know what this curve is going to look like at this point. There's not really enough information here to say, but that's that's something I guess all right I guess that's something it's not a lot but let's find the inflection points now uh, so what about inflection points inflection points we're gonna use the second derivative so I will refresh my memory the second derivative I hope you had this written down before 12 x squared minus 48 x plus 36 all right as always I'm gonna simplify this it'll make it easier to deal with I think you can factor out a 12, and then you got x squared minus 4x plus 9, and then you can factor this. Um, I believe, is that right? No, that's a 3. Come on now. Don't tell Hoodie Man. Uh, now we can factor this. Okay, this is 12 here. And then in there we got x minus 3 and x minus 1. That'll make it work. All right. Uh, so my inflection points uh, means I'm going to set this equal to zero and also say when this does not exist. Uh, because it's a polynomial, again, f prime of x does not exist. Uh, n a is what I'm trying to write there. Uh, it's not the case that this has any um, f prime of x does not exist never. This always exists because there's no denominator, so you don't have to worry about that. What about f prime of x equaling zero? That you do have to worry about, but it's not so bad when you've already got it factored. x minus three like that, x minus one equals zero. It means this one is zero or this one is zero, which means x equals three, x equal one are my two solutions. So these are two inflection points. As we did with the critical numbers, we want to find the y values for these two points and plot them on the graph. Uh, let's find the y values. Actually, x equals 3, you may recall, this was also a critical number. So, uh, interesting fact, I guess. This is a critical number and also an inflection point. But anyway, we already know the y value because we computed already was 27. The 1, we did not compute yet. So, let's find the y value for x equals 1. It's not hard to plug 1 in. Remember, you got to plug into the original formula for f of x. You should not be plugging into any of the derivatives at this point. Okay, here's the formula for f of x. This will tell us the y value when I plug in 1. So f of 1 is 1, this is easy enough, right? Times 8 times 1 plus 18 times 1 squared. 
this is 1 minus 8 plus 18, and that is 11, right? Okay, so my two inflection points are x equal 1, y equal 11. So these are inflection points. And x equal 3, y equal 27. All right, I'm going to plot these on the graph, and hopefully we will be, uh, we'll have enough information on the picture to actually draw the graph. See what Hoodie Man thinks. Okay, now we got a little more information. I'm going to plot the inflection points. Remember the inflection points he just said? X equal 3, Y equal 27. I've already got that one. Also, X equal 1, Y equal 11. I guess 11 should be around here somewhere. Right there. All right. Now, these points, remember, I put a little horizontal line through to indicate that when the curve goes through this point, it should be horizontal. I'm not going to do that here because the curve should not be horizontal here. This is an inflection point. That means the concavity will be changing. But actually, I think it is uh, enough information so far to actually draw this curve, the whole curve. Check it out. What's going to happen from this point? Well, first of all, the curve has to go up to here. All right. So between here and here, it's going to be increasing. Uh, and I think the only way that could happen is like this, right? Because it has to be horizontal there and it has to go up to there. Uh, it has to look like that. Now, right now at the inflection point, what's going to happen? The concavity will switch. So far right here, it's concave up. That means from here up to here, it has to be concave down. Of course, it also has to be increasing because it's going up like that. So how do you draw a curve from here to here, which is concave down? It must look like that. All right. Notice I when I hit this point, I was going horizontal because we have to because that's a critical point. All right. What should happen over here? Well, the question in your mind, because it's horizontal here, there's really two options. Either it does this or it does this, all right? Those are your only choices. You gotta ask yourself, what do I think the concavity is over here? Is it concave up, in, in which case you choose that one, or is it concave down, in which case you choose that one? Well, we know this is an inflection point. That means the concavity should change here, all right? The, uh, right here, it's concave down. Since that's an inflection point, the concavity should change to up, and so it has to be that one. So get rid of this one, right? So the curve has to look like that. Uh, what about over here? Again, you basically have two choices. It could do that or it could do that. It has to be one of these because it's uh, horizontal. And it's not going to do any more kind of this kind of a stuff over here because there are no more critical points. And any kind of nonsense like that would require extra critical points. So really, you only have two choices for what this curve is going to do. And again... How do you know? Does it go up there or down there? Think about the concavities, right? This point is not an inflection point. That means the concavity should not change when the curve goes through here. Since we knew it was concave up right there, it has to still be concave up, which means it still has to do that. It cannot do this. If it did that, then that point would have been an inflection point, but we know it is not an inflection point. So get rid of that one. And that's it. I just sketched the whole graph, right? Do, 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 do. There it is. So uh, once you plot the critical numbers and the inflection points, typically that is enough information to straight up draw the whole picture. Pretty awesome, huh?